Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renata's team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. Today is November 5th. It's Thriving Thursday. We've got an awesome training today, but first a few quick announcements. Our quote of the day today is, the best way to treat obstacles is to use them as stepping stones. Laugh at them, tread on them, and let them lead you to something better. We have our dates for Renata's National Conference 2021. We're going to be doing three full days of training, March 18th through the 20th. Mark your calendar and make sure that you've got those three days cleared out so that you can be fully present for the training. Our theme for conference next year is shifting higher in, into focused transformation. And we also have our dates for leadership retreat. We're going to be going to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. August 13th through the 17th, 2021. Very excited to see you all there. If you haven't already, make sure you check out oyesoes.com. Michael and his team put together a short video that explains the optional event subscription, what it is, what comes with it, and how it helps out our teams. With that being said, we've added some, some really awesome weekly and daily support to our support systems every week on Thursday at 6 p.m. So today at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, we are meeting with Dane Clark for a weekly private capital masterclass. Dane has taken what he's learned from our private capital courses, multiple of them, and has put them to work, created over $16 million in investments or in, in capital for his deals. And so he's again, taken what he's learned from our classes and put it to work. And so he's facilitating this study group to help us put our classes into action. And we also have a daily real estate action mastermind. This is every day, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9.45 p.m. Mountain Time. And this has been a lot of fun. If you're looking at working on deals, if you're watching your classes, then you definitely want to be a part of this dream call. Bring your questions, bring your concerns, anything that you need help with. It's a perfect opportunity for you to come and mastermind. And on Fridays, we have our fabulous Friday morning with Lily Portas. So join us tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for our marketing call with Lily. Also, every day from noon till about 12.15, we have the Get to Know You call, which has just started oh, about a month ago with Michael Huggins and Scott Rowe, where they are showcasing someone's story. And this has been such a great exposure for your guests. Again, it's just 15 minutes, so you just hop on and you hear out someone's story, invite your guests to this uh, presentation. It's really, really powerful. You can join that by going to bit.ly slash zoom up. And of course, you want to make sure you register in Helios. You'll see that this event is in Helios. Just search for Michael Huggins. Register for the, for the event, get your guests registered, and we'll see you there. Those have been really, really cool. Today, we're going to be learning about Cecilia, Cecilia Hakes. Um, successes. So make sure you tune in today at noon. Last night, we had an awesome house tour, Tyson's Jungle House. It was a lot of fun. I had a few guests there who loved it. The purchase price on the property is 190000 and the rehab he's putting into it is about 160000 <clears throat> The ARV, it should sell for around $475,000. So Tyson is looking at an $82,000 profit and it's just incredible. It was a really, really cool house tour. We do these each and every week on Wednesday and Thursday. So make sure you're tuning in. This is a really, really great way to introduce your guests to our system. For our events this week, this is a snapshot of what we've got going on each and every week. So if you'd like to take a screenshot, you can do so now. To access the events, everything other than profits, you will go to teamelevateusa.com. And that's also the, the site that you'll send to your guests so that they can access the event. Every Tuesday, we're doing a profits intro. Michael Huggins is doing a great job at showing people around the world what our profits education is all about. That's Tuesday at 12.30 Mountain Time. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I just mentioned, we have our house tours every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure that you're getting your guests to these. These are awesome first exposure. And then every Thursday, we have a house tour in Spanish. We have a Pillars of Wealth introduction. We have our follow-up and funding webinar and onboarding session. We've got essentials offered in both English and Spanish. So any students that you might have that are working through their essentials, this is a great study group for them to attend. We also have our business development study group. 
and multiple study groups on real estate investing. We've got fix and flip, wholesaling, multifamily, and short-term rental. Every, everything you see here is all happening at 7 p.m. So you get to pick and choose which, which, um, which you want to plug in with. All right, so we do record these trainings. We're on both Facebook as well as on YouTube. Our Facebook page is Renata's Team Elevate. There's a lot of important announcements there. Plus you can catch all these recordings. And our YouTube channel has both these morning recordings as well as all of the Zoom up calls, those 15 minute Zoom up calls that you can just take the link, send it to your guests. That way, if they're not able to make it at noon, we've got all of those recorded for you. So take advantage of these two resources, our Facebook page and the YouTube channel. Today, we get to learn from Wanda Carrasquillo. Very excited to hear what she's got to share with us today. She's always got some wonderful mindset and personal development training to share with us and does a wonderful job at linking it to our marketing business. So Wanda was born in Puerto Rico and she earned herself two master's degrees despite uh, many life challenges. In her career, she succeeded in many ways, but only to an extent to where she would hit the ceiling whenever she tried to reach higher. She was spending most of her time trading hours for dollars and on the side was always looking for entrepreneurial uh, opportunities. She never accomplished much in her business attempts, however. So about four years ago was when Renatus or when Wanda found Renatus and Wanda has now exceeded her income goals in less time and in less effort. In her first eight months alone with Renatus, she earned six figures and has continued to do so each year after. She's also completed around 20 real estate transactions. So she's a great leader showing the way with both real estate as well as marketing. She's built a large team of entrepreneurs, which allows them to succeed as she has. So again, I'm very, very excited for what Ma Wanda has to share with us today. Make sure you take notes. Good morning, Wanda. How are you? Good morning. Can you hear me okay? You hear me okay? Okay. I, I just want to make sure because I'm using different set of um, headsets. All awesome. right. I am so excited. Um, I wasn't here last week because I was traveling from Utah, from Puerto Rico to Utah. So I'm in Utah now and uh, the weather is fabulous. It's, uh, it's kind of, it's not hot, it's not cold and I like this weather. So anyway, I came because I'm gonna be going today and this whole weekend with, to the retreat with Troy Don. So I'm excited about that training and I have a deal. I closed on a property yesterday. I'm so excited. So um, I'm back in the game on real estate. So I can add up another real estate into my, um, into my portfolio. I am gonna do a fix and flip. It came really nice. One of these days I will tell you about that um, particular deal and maybe um, we will do pretty much, maybe I'm sure we will do a house tour so you can see the numbers on that property and everything, but I'm very, very excited. Not only on the deal itself for the way that I found the deal, that that's a, a story of itself. So I'm very, very excited about that. And I'm more excited about what I'm gonna discuss today because um, this week I've just been um, researching or things that are coming to me in pod, podcasts and things that I'm studying that align specifically with everything that we've been talking lately in terms of um, this mentality of poor mentality, rich mentality. Remember that a few weeks ago we did that square in which we said, okay, um, poor people mentality, people with poor or mentality, they take, um, they delayed on their process of making a decision and then they change their mind really quickly. I had one particular case in which this girl, she had put her order three times, three times after waiting a long time and three times she put it in and then she had canceled three times, okay? So it's incredible how, and I don't want to, you know, judge her or anything. I'm like, but that is a poor mentality, according to this meaning that we put in together. Then you have the rich mentality. They take fast decisions, but they don't change their mind very quickly. They, to change their mind, it will take like forever. 
may, may not even change their mind because they, when they make decisions, it's a good decision. So based on that, I've been kind of searching and I don't know how, you know, the universe sometimes works, but when you are in that search for something, things are starting to appear in your feet and everywhere, right? It's like you like one thing and then every, so suddenly you just see it everywhere. So that's what has been happening to me. So lately, specifically this week, I've been um, listening to podcasts of rich people and the behavior of these people. And one of the stories that really um, um, kept my attention was the Rockefeller story. Rockefeller, and I don't know if you know this story, but Rockefeller, when he was little, he was, um, let me see, it, it was a big family, uh, maybe six or eight kids in, her, in his family. And the father left, left the mother, so the kids needed to go outside and work. So he started to work shining shoes, shoe shine. And in, during the summer, then he um, shoveled the snow and he sold newspaper and all of that. But one day when he was um, shining the shoes for this guy, he noticed that he was talking with another guy about these meetings and this place that they were meeting. And he asked them, where are you guys meeting? And he didn't, why do you wanna know? Well, I just wanna know where you guys meet. The guy, I don't think the guy told him where they were meeting, but he figured it out and he followed them. And he happened to be in this cafeteria or in this place where all these rich guys were meeting every single uh, week or day, or whatever the meetings were right? And he started to visit that place and he started and, and he bought a cup of coffee. So, and he sat down at a table and he just, um, actually he just left the cup of coffee there for a long time because he was observing every person. He was looking at the way they were dressing up, the way they um, talked, the way they acted and all of that. And he was absorbing that. And then he, it, it took him like hours to take, to drink the cup of coffee. But he did that for a long time. He was going back to that uh, place and observing and observing and observing and started to build relationships. And in the story that I heard this week, I didn't hear this one, but that one I, I read it in another book in which he apparently asked somebody for a million dollars. And this is how he created his first million dollars. I hope I've, um, I'm good in this story, but he asked somebody for the million dollars and he said, if I match it and I put my million dollars, but he didn't have his, he, I will give you the return. So he went and he doubled it and he was able to pay back the million dollars and he made his first million. So Rockefeller then, you know the story, he's, he's one of the richest people in the United States. Anyway, um, thinking about that, and thinking about the behavior and the, the posture and things that we have to do to become rich and not necessarily that the money is there for us. It's like Michael Hogan says, remember, um, the money comes to me in different amounts and at different times. So it's, it's your mentality, it's up here. How do you see yourself? Um, Rockefeller didn't, the money didn't come immediately. He was a young, person, but he started to act and he started to think and he started to um, perceive and to attract what he was becoming. And it just um, interesting. And I thank you, Kelly, for all the preparation that you do for this meeting, because Bob Snyder just said that in that video that you played this morning, you have to become the person that you want to attract. So you want to attract rich people or people with like-minded mentality, you have to be that person. So this week I've been also kind of searching what are those differences in the mentality that will make me a better person? And I came across different podcasts. I've been just listening things this week. And 
one girl was listing a lot of different characteristics of poor mentality. And she listed like 25 um, characteristics. And I, I said, okay, I'm gonna reduce this for my audience. And this is what I came up with. Um, first, we need to start thinking, what is your relationship with money? So ask yourself, what is your relationship with money? If you are the kind of person that when you walk in the store, you run to the rack for the sales rack, mm, be careful, be careful, because that could be a poor mentality instead of a rich mentality. How nice it is to go like this shirt, it's a Michael Kors shirt, grab it, I like it, I want it, buy it, okay? But at the same time, you have to be careful because you don't want to start spending money if you don't need it. Um, if you actually, if, if whatever you buy is going to improve your relationship with people to really produce money, then that's a different story. Like Rockefeller, he started to see how people dress. Obviously, he needed to start dressing up like those people, right? And that way, he pretend to be a rich person as well. Because if he would be going with his um, clothes and shining shoes to the cafeteria, people were not going to be paying attention. So he started to change the way he dressed. So if you buy something because you're going to appeal to your audience and to the people that you want to attract, and that, and at the end, it's going to bring you money and it's going to bring you more success. Obviously, you want to dress up different, differently and obviously you want to go buy new clothes if you have to. That's an example, right? So the way the, in the, that relationship, you and the money is so important. That has to do with how you um, spend the little amounts that you need to spend. Are you spending amounts on coke, on junk food, on things that don't really give you value, then your, your money is gonna go down the drain. So you're thinking in a poor mentality. You need to start looking at your budget and said, okay, this is my budget. I'm gonna stick to my budget. And if I don't need coke, I'm not gonna buy coke because that takes me to the next level. And the next level is your relationship with yourself. And health is very, very important. I've been reading um, a book. I'm gonna show you this book. It's so awesome. It's Anxious Secret of a Master Healer. Uh, let me see if I can, oh, it was on uh, my background. Uh, right there. Oh, there we go. Anxious, anxious secret of a master healer. Anxious secret of, of a master healer. And who's the this, author? The author is my friend, Clint Rogers, Dr. Clint Rogers. And I actually, when I went to Bali, um, he went in that trip that I went. And we had that mastermind and that retreat in Indonesia, Bali, Indonesia. And He's a doctor here in the United States, and he met Dr. Naram. Dr. Naram is in India, and he started to follow him for 10 years. Now, Dr. Naram just passed away this, Feb this past February, but by then, he already had written this book, and he has all these secrets. So one of the things is that he's doing for health is a mon bean soup. So this week, I started to do my mon bean soup because this quarantine left me with about 30 pounds more that nobody have. So I want to shed that, um, that those pounds out of my body. I don't, I don't want to say the word um, lose because remember that your brain, if you lose something, you want to gain it back. So you have to be very careful what you say and how you say it. So I want to shed this uh, extra pounds that I put during quarantine out of my body. And I want to become healthy. So mom bean soup is, is sold in Indian stores. 
So I went and I got my 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 bean soup and I did the process. So this week I've been eating those mom bean soup. And it is very healthy for your body. And I've been eliminating the meats and stuff like that. So I'm trying to follow some of the guidance that this book gives you just because I need to be healthy. You know, I told you that my grandma is 105 years old. And if I, I always think that I have her genes. And if I'm gonna outlive, outlive her, I have 50 more years to go. So I have to be healthy because I'm not gonna live these next 50 years in bed or crippled or not being able to do the things that I want. I want to provide and I want to do something good for humanity, right? That's what I'm so excited about this training with um, Troy Don because I want to learn, I want to apply more into my life to reach that mentality. So that is that not that part of yourself uh, in the rich mentality that what are you doing to you, to yourself? What are you putting in this brain? Every day, what do you read? What do you listen to? Um, podcasts, um, radio shows that are positive. I've been following Les Brown. Every time that I have the notification that his life, I just jump in to listen. Because every time I listen to him, I can pick up something better. And that gives me the energy to continue on. That I'm not going to be kind of um, sleepy. If you are sleepy, if you are spending too much time in front of the TV, that's a poor mentality. Um, this girl, she, she um, gave some statistics. She said that 23% of people with poor mentality use one hour a day um, to read. And the remaining time, they're lazy and doing nothing or in front of the TV or in front of, um, of a video game or something like that. But 17% um, of the rich people only spend that one hour on the TV, you know, to relax. So which group are you in? Are you in that group that spend most of your time lazy, thinking about it, um, playing games, looking at the feed, you know, um, or are you spending the time creating, educating yourself? And I know sometimes action is, doesn't come immediately. Why? Because you have to prepare yourself, but you don't want to prepare yourself too long, right? You want to put like practice, learn and practice, learn and practice. Put you put your learning and whatever you learn into action immediately as long as you um, continue on and you know I've been in about 20 now it's like 21 22 transactions but every transaction is different every transaction you learn something different in this particular one I'm like I should have structured this other way so all of that is is something that you say, okay, this could be structured this other way. Maybe I will make more money than what I'm making right now. But I try to work it out and it doesn't gonna work if to switch it in a different strategy. So we kept the same way that I proposed originally. But all of that is because I have the knowledge and I've been able to apply it. And I, these masterminds after um, this meeting from 9 to 9.30, they're so rich. And we can consult with each other, the deals and so on. So all of that is part of your routine. So whatever you do in your routine, waking up early to be in these meetings, to participate on the masterminds, that is going to enrich your mind. That's going to enrich yourself to be a better person. Then number three, is your relationship with others. This is so important because I've been, I've been um, telling my granddaughter this um, lately. It, in Spanish is, dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. Pero es, tell me with who you hang around 
and I will tell you who you are, okay? So basically, if you hang around people who are lazy, who are just in games and they just drinking and partying and they don't have a, a line-minded mindset that helps you to improve and to be more positive, one day you become just like them. So you need to start see, um, searching for those people who have the positive mentality, that you have a positive mentality and don't start making excuses like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that deal because, you know, I don't have experience yet. I haven't taken the class yet. I don't know what to do. And all of these excuses. If you start putting excuses into your action, that's a poor mentality. So what we need is you start looking at ourselves and say, okay, what are the things that I'm doing? with money what are the things that i'm doing with my relationship with others and what are the things that i'm doing with myself to have the rich mentality that you want and become the person that you want to become because you will attract the people that you become so you want to attract um people who have the money, who has the ability and has the desire to study and to improve their life, you have to be doing that. You cannot expect that somebody is going to study if you don't study, right? I cannot sell an education package to somebody if I'm not studying myself. Because it's like, okay, how? No, you're going to study this and you're going to become a real estate investor but I am not becoming a real estate investor. So that's how you can attract your, co your customers, right? Hey, I'm learning this, I'm applying this. I just learn and writing that sentence, I just learned, what did you learn today? I just learned that I need to become a better person to attract better people into my life so we can all race together and become rich. You know, we, we're not going to leave anybody behind. We are all racing up together. Some people go a little faster. Some people go a little slower. But we are in the same race, okay? We have the same goal. We have the same ability. We have the same tools. We belong to this big family that allow us to connect with each other. I was sitting in Puerto Rico, and I have a text from one friend family member. Wanda, I have a deal. Huh. Give me the numbers. Send me the numbers. I did my quick research. I said, I'll be there. I want the house. And I came. I solved them a problem, right? And I was able, and, and then it's so nice because then look at, I got this nice text. Um, it was so beautiful when you are able to help others. Let me um, see this. Let me see what's, uh, what's in here. It was, um, so he says, this is so beautiful. We just talking about you and how amazing and loving you are and how wonderful it is that you are working with these two people. After month and month, you brought everything together within days. You are so great. We are so grateful to know and love you. You miss, we miss your smile and can't wait to see you again. Those are the things that allows you to continue, at least for me, allows me to continue on. When I can, um, somebody bring me a situation and I said, I can solve it. And I'm not, you know, like a, a, an executive solver, problem solver, but I can solve problems, <laughs> you know? So it's because of the relationship that I build in this community, because I, I was able to close that house, that, that, that deal came to me like Tuesday or Wednesday last week. 
and I'm in Puerto Rico, remember, I'm over there. And I, I said, well, I'm, I, I'm traveling, so I can be there by Friday and we can meet and we set it up and we closed yesterday. So three days and we were closing, full amount, everything. Everything was put together because when you have a good desire, when your heart and your mind is in the right direction, things are gonna be coming together like puzzle and all the pieces will be there for you. It's just amazing because then you build more relationship, you have more attraction, you have the desire, your mindset in the right direction to improve the life of others. And as you improve the life of others, your life will be improved, okay? So that is amazing. I wanna open up now to conversation and we still have, um, yeah, we still have a few more minutes in which I want you to analyze what I just said in terms of your relationship with money, in terms of your relationship with others, and in terms of your relationship with yourself, where are you? Are you still in this poor mentality in which you, with money, is like you spending crazily without budget? You don't have a kind of a financial plan. If you don't have a financial plan, if you don't have a budget, if you don't know what you're earning, if you don't know your target earnings, if you don't have a vision of how you're gonna create wealth, that is a poor mentality. And I've been there, I'm not, you know, I'm just kind of, this week has been a reflection week for me. All of these items have come to my life and it just, came to me and I'm like making this realization. I've been there, done that. I live um, in occasions in my life when I was raising my three children as a single mother. I remember one occasion in which I had only $20 and it was before Christmas. I either have to buy crappy um, toys at the dollar store or put the $20 in gas. And I went to the dollar store and I look at the, the, um, the toys there. I'm like, these toys are like nothing. You know, they're gonna destroy it in a minute. They're gonna break in a second. And with tears in my eyes, I put the $20 in my car for gas. And my kids were not going to have Christmas gift that Christmas. Needless to say, that was the best Christmas ever for my kids because somebody knocked my door a few days before Christmas. That was like the same in the same days, knocked my door and we were like, oh my goodness, who's in the door? Who's in the door? And we go and they left in front of my balcony a pile of toys, a pile of toys. Each one of my kids and myself have 25 gifts, 25 gifts. It get me emotional because um, it's just things that you don't expect that they will come to your life according to how your heart, how your mind is into place. So miracles can happen in your life. And as you continue on in progressing, and this, this story just came to my mind. I wasn't even planning on telling you this. It's just, so this, you probably, you are there. I know somebody in this phone call is there. So you needed to hear this. And there is a solution. You can get out of that. You can get out of that. And any situation that you are in, and remember I didn't use the word problem because problem is a negative connotation. 
Every situation has a solution. So it doesn't matter where you at right now, it's where you are going. And it doesn't even matter where you are coming from. So don't worry about where you are coming from. Don't even worry about where you at right now. Worry about where you are going. You moving forward, you are reaching higher. You're reaching higher. And there's no limits, guys. The sky is not a limit. There is no limits. Some people say the sky is the limit. To me, no, there's no limit. The sky is not my limit. There's something out there more than the sky. So continue to reach higher, continue to develop yourself, continue to improve yourself because good things are happening. And the thing is that with the relationship with money, not until you are ready to receive, you will not receive it. The universe will prepare you for that and to receive it. You're gonna raise the thermostat and your relationship with money will continue to improve as you raise that thermostat. Maybe $30,000 is comfortable for you. Maybe 50 is comfortable for you. To me, I found it very comfortable in 100, but now it's not enough. So I have to raise my limit. And it's the same thing, you know, the feeling is the same. If you're on a 50,000 limit on your thermostat, you feel as comfortable as I'm feeling in a 100, right? But not until you say, I need to raise it and I need to raise it, then is when you start moving forward to do something different, to improve your life and to continue on. And the universe will bring it to you in order for you to complete your goals, but you have to have a focus. I, um, I just recently, I'm not a kind of person that I dream on big things like big houses or I have a nice car, I have a BMW, but it's just because that car gave me money, okay? It, it produced me money. But other than that, it's not like I wanna have a Lamborghini or I wanna have a, a no, I don't dream on that. I actually, on my dream board, what I have is this van that I want to just live in this van. It's a Mercedes van with, um, with a house inside. So it's really, a, it looks like a van outside, but inside it has kitchen, you have the bed, you have everything. So I can travel all over the States and, and, and drive around and, and meet more people and, ex and, and tell them about Renatus and, and then sign people up. This is my dream. I've been dreaming about that right, for two years. And, and I, I, was thinking, you, Wanda? <laughs> I, I was thinking even to wrap it up and say Wanda World of Wealth so that's, I will put that in there and people will follow me and I'll be an influencer. So that's kind of a dream. So I don't dream in a big house. But the other day, um, you know how in Facebook, sometimes you have these try things like games and it says um, the house. And suddenly I have this picture of this mansion, a big mansion with a swimming pool, beautiful. And I'm like, huh. And that opened up my mind into dreaming higher. I said, huh, I can own that house. So I, I copy it, I printed it, and I put it on my, on my board. Why? Because I'm like, it's full of rooms. So I can have my mom, my dad, my grandma, everybody living in that big house. And everybody has their own room and everything. And then we have a common area in which um, everybody gets together just because I like to surf. So there is not all about the big house, but the surf that I'm gonna do, the serving. So that's how I started to dream. All of that is, is put into place. So you dream higher, you reach higher, and you target higher, you aim higher. Let me be quiet. I want to open up the mic to you guys. Tell me where you at. Tell me where you at in your relationships with the money, relationship with others, or relationship with yourself. 
Do you love yourself enough to be healthy, to be wise, to be better, to improve your life and to attract those people who you become? Tell me, open up the mic and tell me. Anybody? Oh, if nobody's gonna go, I'll go. <laughs> Okay, Tilda is always I, my, my I, can't, you know, I can't stand the silence because you yes. know, we're wasting time on the silence. So, um, yes. but anybody would come, just feel free. You know, I'm just, you know, filling the, the silence here. But yeah, well, thank you so, so much, Wanda. This is great. Uh, first, you know, congratulations with your deal. That is awesome. So uh, three days, wow. Yeah, I wanna hear about that one on the other side. So, um, but yeah, it, it is so important that we real, you know, we think about our relationship with, you know, with money because, you know, sometimes, you know, we're focused on, you know, making money and we forget what, who, what and who we're becoming to. So, you know, and we, you know, we come up with a lot of excuses and I know Bob Tierney always say this, um, if you want to, you know, you either make excuses or you make, you know, a lot of money, but you can't, you make money, you can't do both. So, so if you want to make money, then drop the excuses. And if you don't want to make money, then, you know, have your excuses, then you just don't have the money. So yeah, it, it's just so important, you know, who we become. And I think, you know, what I really want to, you know, focus on is just keep thinking of the why, you know, why are we even doing this? Because if, um, if the why is not even there or it's not big enough, then we don't even strive harder because your why is, is not, you know, it, it's not big enough. So, uh, so, you know, it's so important that, you know, you really are, you know, focused on where you're going, you know, because you don't want to be like, you know, going to like a, a place where you don't even know how to get there because we we have the directions. We have Renata's education. We have the community and it's so important, you know, and it's so powerful what we have. But if you don't have that vision, if you don't have the why or where you want to be, then it's impossible to get there. You know what I mean? So that's what another thing you mentioned, the people that you hang out with. It's so important, you know, before I started, you know, Renatus and, you know, I had friends and, you know, we get together and, you know, you probably notice some of your friends or even family members, you know, there's like more in the negative side, you know, they're not as supportive as, you know, you, you want. So I can't even tell them about what my dreams are. So I have some, you know, here I can openly say, you know, um, you know, these are my dreams and I want to have certain, you know, this and that. And, but in certain friends, you know, I can't even tell them that, but, you know, you, you kind of outgrow when you start with Renata's, you outgrow those people. And then when you become with them, it's like, man, I used to be like one of those, because, you know, if you hang out with five people, you become one of them, whoever you hang out with, you become one of them. And I always, you know, tell the kids as, you know, they're growing up, um, even when they're little, you know, I always tell them, be careful who you hang out with, because you become one of them. And, and that was always, and that was, that was prior to Renata's and I'm not sure how I knew that, but, um, but I, I did tell the kids that growing up. So it's, it's really, you know, I think to me that is such a valuable lesson to, to give to our children. So, um, but yeah, so it's like, you know, it's so, you know, important. Yeah, I'd say, you know, I have my goal, but I'm not there yet, but yes. <laughs> I, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm a working progress, you know, in all aspects of my life, not just you know, the money, money side, I always think of like wealth, you know, having wealth in all aspects of your life. And that's, you know, including, you know, spirit, your spirit, spirituality, your, you know, your fitness and um, your, uh, your family and, and the money. So, yes. So that's and, and definitely, you know, it's like who you hang around with. That's the best person you are going to become. So all of that is so important. Thank you, Gilda, for sharing and for participating. Anybody else? We still have Thank you. about five more minutes and I don't want to um, waste the time. I can keep talking and give you stories, but I want to hear from you. Oh, you know, that is so important. That is part of your relationship with, your so with yourself. If you stay in the comfort zone, that is the poor mentality. Oh, you want to be um, 
challenging yourself, challenging yourself. I challenge myself this week. I, um, I just make an offer in a house that potentially um, could be a seller finance or subject to. So, and I haven't worked with that strategy yet. So I was just writing the offer and I have um, butterfly in my stomach. I called Jared, I called Bill. I tried to put my head together and trying to, and I finally said, you know what? I'm just gonna write it. If they say no, it's okay, but I'm gonna write it. Once I wrote it and send it, it was like, oh, I challenged myself. I challenged myself and I got out of my comfort zone. It's easy for me now to put a, a fix and flip together. That one is not a problem now. I can do it with my eyes closed. I close this one in three days, but because I've been doing it for a while, right? And I made mistakes and I failed, but I continue on. And I, I said, okay, it's time for me to get up. Forget about the failing, it's about getting up. Getting up and do it again and try again and try again and try again. But there's some people who just quit or they lose money in one and they quit. No, because this is the business. You know, you gain, you lose, you gain, you lose. Um, oh my goodness, there's something so important that I think I wrote it somewhere, but um, about failures that I, I read this week. And it's, it's just in, so important. If you feel like you can fail and you cannot handle failing, fail, failure, that's not good. Well, failure you just have, that. You have to expect failures have to expect it. Okay, guys, and who who else wanted to say something? The person who brought that topic about the comfort zone, you wanna come up and tell me something? Yes, good morning, how are you? Good morning, let me see, I don't see your face. Yeah, I know, I don't have my face up. Oh, um, okay. Um, okay. I just wanna say, first of all, thank you so much. You're always such an inspiration and you just give us so many nuggets when you speak and I'm, I really, appreciative of that. Um, I was a little apprehensive before. I don't know why I wrote an offer this week. Unfortunately, I didn't get it, but I learned a lot in the process. So it's good to hear you talk about, you know, you keep trying, you move forward because you learn something even when you don't get the property. So yes. I feel really good about that. And once the other agent told me that it went to somebody else, the first thing in my mind was, I'm going to go on the iOS and find, you know, another one. And I'm going to keep writing until I get one. So I felt really good because I felt like it was drawing me forward more into the real estate because I've spent so much time on the marketing and I want to mm -hmm. have the balance. And mm -hmm. even in my personal life, you know, I too have um, the COVID pounds. So I want to spend more time walking. <laughs> <laughs> walking down the hallway and getting yes. on the treadmill. If yes. I don't start up with just 10 minutes until I can build from that, because for me, that's part of the balance that I want to, to have in my life so that I feel that everything has that, that kind of balance, not just in my business, because I spend a lot of time in doing that. Uh, I want to spend more time in the education. I'm not beating myself up about it because I too, I'm a work in progress, but you know, I notice what I'm noticing and then I make adjustments and I'm yes. living more of a life and thank God for Renatus because it is phenomenal being around this kind of environment compared to some of the other people that I've been around in the past that as time has gone on that slowly I'm noticing that they're not really even in my life anymore because yes. I realized that the people that I was associating myself with, I was becoming more like them yes. and less of the person that I was in being really positive. And mm -hmm. I noticed while you were talking, there is another group that I'm affiliated with that I just really want to flee from because they're negative. Yes. And that's not the mindset I want to have. And that's not, how can I put it? That's not who I am. I would rather be and spend more time in this environment where I'm around people that are helpful and positive and all the different attributes 
that I want to continue to gravitate to. So I want to say thank you for your 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 um, speech today and sharing the information with us. It it really does make a difference. Please don't stop doing it. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, and I really, really um, appreciate what you just said. I honestly think that um, everything is about who you want to become. Who you want to become. If you're hanging around these negative people, if you like it, you stay there, you're going to stay where they at. Just look at their progress. Where are they? Are they feeling miserable? Are they, are they having any success in the positive way? You know, you, say, you can define success in different ways, but in a positive way. So if they are not, this is not where you need to be. So you need to change gears and move forward into what you really want to become, into really what, who you want to be. And that's what is important. And it doesn't matter how old are we. I'm 57 and I, it's okay because I'm going to have 50 more years to go and I need to leave them fully. I need to leave them these 50 years I need to create. Um, I feel lately like I wanted to complete so many things and I want to balance my life in different ways, like my marketing, my real estate and everything. And this week I have been focusing more in the real estate. It's okay. It's okay. I know I still have my goals for market marketing. It's okay. I'm no, I'm going to make it because I have my focus in what I want. And I'm going to attract those people. So this deal may bring me those people who I'm looking for, for my marketing. One thing leads to the other one. I always, um, I always tie the two together. My, my deals bring me the people for my business. Thank you. I needed okay. to hear that. Yes. So do your deals because they will bring you, you guess, for you, uh, for you prospect. And hey Wanda, I want, I want yes. to have a chance to say something today. Yes, please. I have, well, just just today I made the decision I, I'm putting a house under contract. I had been kind of holding off and not really putting it under contract and, and I, I didn't have to do it, but essentially there's this point of action when you put a house under contract that happens there's kind of like this magic and it starts to feel very different when you have put it under contract because now it opens up all kinds of options you can wholesale yes. it you can get the thing un yes. underway you can find funding you can do all all the different parts of that come about because you take that first step and and it's more important than it seems so i encourage all of you to put more houses under contract okay just just don't be afraid of doing it let that be a first step once you have that step in place then you just opened up a whole new world of opportunities that are just sitting at your footstep if you if it if you know it's a good deal get it under contract don't wait yeah. and i think it'll work out well for you that's right. Thank you, Jess. And yeah, I just put this offer for, I, I offer only $40,000. But what I want is really to start a conversation with these people. So that's, um, this is my starting point. I know what is going to be my top and I'm starting conversation. So you just put that into action. Your actions and your, um, and your marketing will come together when you actually do it. But you have to do it. Okay, guys, I need to run to my pit meeting and it's nine o'clock and the next, uh, this room needs to be used. So talk to you later. Have a wonderful weekend. I will tell you about all these um, amazing things that I'm going to be leaving in the training with Troy Dunn. I'm just excited oh, yeah. about learning. It's just, I'm excited. I'm excited about learning more. Okay, Thank guys, so I talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank Have you a good so day. Much.